up. We're just going to worship tonight <laughs> and just prepare our hearts to receive from God. Hallelujah, because he is so good. So just sing with me. God is so good. all the time. so good to me with everything I 
faithful, Lord God, that we can count on you, Lord God, and we can count on your promises, Lord, and know that you are uh, faithful, that you are good, and Father God, that you love us and care about us, Lord, and so we give you all the praise and all the glory, and Father God, we just thank you uh, that you are here with us tonight, because you said we're two or more are gathered in your name, so we give you glory tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, welcome to Wednesday Night Live. We're glad you're here with us tonight. And uh, as, you, as you notice, Pastor Gil and Lori aren't, aren't here. They're out in the state of Washington vi visiting Faith, their youngest daughter. And uh, so we need to pray for Pastor Gil uh, because we don't want him coming back leaning left. So that's <laughs> his joke. Thank you, Sarah. All right. But welcome. We want to walk, welcome our internet audience. We're glad you're here with us tonight as well. And uh, you can worship with us and magnify God with us. And, uh, and just let us know you're there. If you would, we have people monitoring our, our live stream. And so just say hi or let them know. If you've got a prayer request, uh, they will make sure that we get that and we can pray for you. And those of you here, why don't you welcome one another tonight and uh, in Jesus' name. I see we have some Western Wyomingites, or whatever you want to call them, that are visiting. Just want to welcome the Al Alvies here uh, tonight. They, uh, they, they left us and moved out to Jackson. Poor them, right? Living out on the western side of the state. So we're glad you guys are here tonight. And uh, just real quick, a few announcements. Um, uh, to remind you of things that are coming up, events that are coming up here at Family Harvest Church. Uh, seems like the, uh, not this weekend, but the next weekend we are jam-packed full and just uh, uh, and such. So uh, don't forget on Saturday, May 25th, uh, is that right? Yes, Saturday, May 25th, uh, the Youth Garage Sale uh, starting at 8 o'clock in the morning, running to uh, 1 p.m. Uh, so if you have items that you would like to bring, I know they've already uh, upstairs is full. And, of course, a lot of times they fill the downstairs after Bible school is done on Tuesday night. And uh, it just helps them uh, raise money to help the youth go to youth camp. And uh, that'll take place that, that Saturday. And then that weekend, we have the Durants that are going to be here, our, our healing and miracle meetings. I'm going to talk some more um, concerning that tonight. We've been praying. I trust that you've been praying as well uh, for those meetings. They're excited about being here. Talked to Kevin uh, late last week, and they're looking forward to being here with us again. And so I uh, invite people, invite people that need healing in their bodies, invite people that may need a miracle. And, and you know, nothing 
nothing is impossible. I was reading to the men this morning in prayer in Jeremiah, and, and God says uh, nothing is impossible uh, for him. And in the next chapter, he says, uh, call, and before you even call, I've already answered, and I will show you great and mighty things. Amen. So, so remember that, and, um, and be praying for those meetings, and of course, inviting people to those meetings, because uh, we're trusting God. And then on, on Memorial Day, we're doing a picnic, doing things a little bit different this year. Uh, we're doing a church-wide picnics, and, and you know, we don't have our deacons groups as we did before. And so please sign up out in the foyer. Uh, we, the church is providing the meat and the buns and the drinks. And so you need to, to bring a side and a, a dessert. And so if you would sign up so we know how many people are coming. And uh, if you want to help, you can contact Kevin Miller. His uh, phone number, him and uh, Paul are organizing that for us. And their phone numbers are in the, are in the uh, bulletin. So praise the Lord. Who's ready to give tonight? Well, we got one, woohoo, and yes, and uh, so I guess where two agree, uh, it shall be done for them. So there we go. So ushers, if you'd go ahead and serve the people. You, you know, th these rows are really good rows right here. You know, I, I, I don't know why everybody wants to sit at the back of the church, and I'm going to get rid of these rows and just, you know, just keep moving forward. But anyways, praise God. You all heard, of, heard about the deacon, you know, when the pastor was going away on vacation? You ever heard about the deacon? The, the, the deacon said, Pastor. He said, you know, the pastor's gone for two weeks, and the deacon says, Pastor, he says, I've got a solution. He says, for everybody sitting in the back row, he says, when you get back, everything will be taken care of. And so the pastor's kind of like, man, I don't know what he's going to do. And so he comes back to church, and there's only one row of pews. It's in the front. And he's kind of thinking, okay, you know, and so, so he, he the, 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 you know, of course, people come in, they don't even place to sit, so they sit in the front row, and the front rows get filled. Deacon pushes the button, the, back, the next row pops up, and they get filled, pops up all the way, all the way to the back, and the pastor's pretty excited, and he gets, in fact, he goes a little bit over uh, that particular Sunday, because he's all excited, and uh, with the, at 12.01, the deacon pushes another button, there was a trap door underneath the... <laughs> <laughs> and the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, right? And, you know, so many things I was thinking about, and I'm going to uh, talk about honors and reward tonight, but I was thinking about Elijah and Elisha. I've studied them over the years, taught years ago in a Bible school down in Tennessee on Elijah and Elisha. And, and you know, it's amazing uh, the miracles that happened with the widow women, both Elijah and Elisha. And, and with Elijah, it was the widow woman that she, all she had was a cake left, right? And, and, the, and Elijah said to her, right, you make a cake, but serve me first. Right? Now that, that might think, seem, man, that, you know, that just doesn't seem right. But guess what? God took care of her. And you read the rest of that story. I was reading it today that uh, not only did God take care of them at that time, but then she went uh, later on uh, when her son died, Elijah raised her from the dead. Or raise him from the dead. And then you see Elisha with the woman that um, she came to Elisha and she said, Elisha, the creditors are coming to get my sons and I don't know what to do. And I always, I find this interesting what he said to her. He says, what do you have on hand? Or what do you have in your house? You know, so many times we're looking, <clears throat> I can remember one person telling me, you know, why wouldn't God rain gold out of heaven? Well, you know, God wants us to use what we have. Amen. And, and she goes, well, I got this little bit of oil. And he says, well, tell your sons to go and find as many jars and whatever containers and, and fill that, fill those containers up. And, you know, as soon as you run out of containers and the oil stopped up and she took the rest of the containers, sold, right, paid off the debt, and then they lived off the rest. That's a miracle. Amen. And guess what? God still does those things today. And it might be in different ways that he does that for us. But, but we, as we give, we can trust him that he will take care of us. Because just like we say in that song, he's faithful. Yes. Amen. Yes. And, and such. And so uh, as you give tonight, just remember that, that he will take care of you. Just like he took care of those widow women. And, and what's another interesting point, and I'll, I'll be quiet. I have coffee before I come down here, so that might be... Uh, <laughs> Um, another point that, that both of those women were not from Israel. They weren't. They weren't. They weren't Jewish. They weren't Israelis. They were. They were. They were outside. But yet God, in His faithfulness, took care of them. 
Amen? And so God will take care of you too. Now we have a confession we'd like to say here at Family Harvest Church, so why don't you join in with us? This is my seed. I sow it into the kingdom of God. I sow it because I love God and want to see Family Harvest Church continue to fulfill what God has called us to do. Building families that are happy, stable, fruitful, and blessed. I believe that as I sow my seed, it shall be given to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, it shall come back to me in many ways. I thank you, Lord, for many opportunities coming my way. I thank you that the windows of heaven are opening because of my obedience to sow my seed. I thank you, Lord, for the favor of God upon my life and the grace to prosper as you have promised me in your word. So, Father, we thank you. Lord, we thank you that, Lord, you are a miracle-working God. And, Father, we thank you you are faithful, Father God. And, Lord God, that we can trust you. And, Lord, you will supply, Father God. You will, you will provide, Father, not only our needs, Father God, but you'll give us more, Father God, so that we can be a blessing, Father God, in every, every area of our life, Lord God, that we can be a blessing in our church. We can be a blessing to those that are in need, Father God. And, and so we thank you for that, Father God. And, Lord, we, we want to be just conduits, Lord God, where you just give to us and we can just give and be a blessing, Father God. And so we thank you. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. I shall just go ahead and receive, uh, if you would. And we're going to just worship God some more in song tonight. Amen. And uh, so why, as the buckets go by, I want you to stand back up and we will continue to worship God. Should I? 
just thank you, Lord God, and we magnify you. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that we can come into your presence, Lord, by the blood. Father, we don't come in any other way, Lord God. We come because you've invited us to come into your very presence, Lord, and we thank you. As the Bible says in, in the book of Psalms, that in your presence is the fullness of joy. And so, Lord, we thank you tonight for joy in our hearts and joy in our minds. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you may be seated. And once again, we're glad you're here and worshiping with us. And, um, you know, the last few Wednesdays, I've been just taking time and uh, just sharing some things. And, um, you know, I talked about, uh, you know, Lori, about the Holy Ghost. Miss Lori had about prepared, and we need to prepare ourselves. And, and so often, you know, when, when meetings like this are coming up, we, we just depend or we think, well, you know, they're, they're anointed or they should be anointed and, you know, just come. But, but there's a preparedness that we need to do. And, you know, I, I shared with you, you know, you know, in sports or in so many things, you know, we'll prepare. Right? You know, back you know, a few weeks ago we had Easter and, and you know, if you had an Easter dinner, you did some preparation, right? In in advance for that because you wanted your meal to turn out good and and, and such. And but sometimes it I don't know why this is, but when it comes to spiritual things we, we just kinda of think, well, God will do whatever he wants to do and and such. And and so I wanna talk about honor's reward tonight. And, and about honoring the gift, we, we talked a little bit last week, we talked about a gift yes. uh, in Ephesians yes. chapter 4 where God's given gifts. And I'm, I'm a pastor and, and you know, I talked about sometimes I might operate in, in, in the gift of prophet. I'm, that's not my primary gift. I might operate uh, as an evangelist or whatever, but that's not my primary gift. And so God's placed different gifts in the body. Yes. And we need to recognize, I was raised in a church and, and they recognized the pastor, but that was about it. You know, we had missionaries but they didn't believe in apostles and prophets. And, but guess what? Jesus hasn't changed. And he said he gave gifts unto men. He didn't say it ended when the, all the apostles died. 
And so we have all these gifts. And so, you know, God, uh, you know, uh, by the leading of the Holy Spirit and connections that you, you make with people. And, and so we also talked about in, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, at the end of the chapter, Paul talks about uh, uh, those that are all apostles, are all prophets, and then he says, are all working of miracles, are all workers of miracles. And so there are some people that are gifted. They, yeah. uh, they may not necessarily, maybe they do operate and maybe teach and these type of things, but God has anointed them. Uh, to, to bring healing to people's bodies and to bring and to work miracles in people's bodies. And so there's an honoring that we have to do. There's an honoring that takes place and a preparation. And, and I believe that, that, you know, here again, we're not magnifying man, but yet God uses man. And, and when we honor people, we're honoring God. I think sometimes people lose sight of that, that in honoring a person that God has sent our way, that we are honoring Jesus. Right? And honoring one another. We are honoring Jesus. And, and so I already talked about it in First in Kings and Second Kings. And so we have stories about Elijah and Elisha. And very interesting. You know, Elisha uh, served Elijah. When, when you study that out, and many historians, theologians, they believe it was 20 years from the time that Elijah showed up at Elisha's, or Elisha's, yeah, Elijah showed up at Elisha's property. And he threw that cloak around him, which signified the anointing under the Old Testament, under the Old Covenant, to when, when Elijah was caught up into heaven. It was 20 years. So for 20 years he served, and he was, and when you studied out, Elisha did twice as many miracles as Elijah did. And what did he ask? When, you know, he'd go to this one town, and Elijah said, what do you want me to do for you? And he, he kept going with him. He said, well, I'm going to cross over the Jordan. And, and, he, and he went with him, and finally he said, what do you want? He says, that I might receive a double por- portion. He says, well, when you, if you see me when I leave, mm-hmm. right? In other words, he had, to, he had to keep his eyes. He had to keep his focus. Right. And, you know, and all those were testings that Elijah, uh, it was given Elisha, you know, are you going to stick with it, mm-hmm. right? And so he did. And, and here in Second Kings chapter 4, um, uh, in the first part, we talked about the widow's oil, but in, in starting in verse chapter, uh, or verse chapter eight, verse eight of chapter four, and this is a Shunammite, and it says there. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shuman, Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. So here's this lady. And every time Elisha come, come her way, she would persuade him. Okay, I want you to, to notice that. She would persuade him to eat some food. And then, verse 9, she said to her husband, Look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. So, so first of all, she persuaded him. Then, yeah. notice, she recognized that he was a holy man of God. In other words, she recognized that he was a prophet, that he was a minister of God. Said, please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand so it'll be whenever he comes, he can turn in there. You know, that's where we get the, you know, some people talk about, you know, the prophet's room, you know. They'll, they'll, uh, I've been to places where people have, they've, you know, been a guest minister and so they have a place where the guest ministers can stay. Not, you know, not a hotel, but they have a, and some we will call it a prophet's room. In fact, there's one hotel, I think they still do this, but if you are a licensed minister and you show them a letter, you'll, you'll get a, a free room. And they actually have one room, they call it the prophet's room and, and such. And so I don't know what it looks like because I'm not a prophet. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I've never been in there. I never got that. But, you know, and, and so that's where people get it from. It's from this right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so she wanted to have a room. She wanted to have a place. So what is she doing? She's honoring him, right? She's honoring him. And, and because she wants to provide a place, she recognizes uh, who he is and recognizes the, you know, what God is, has done in his life. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. Then he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shuna, Shunammite woman. And when he had called her, she stood before him and he said to her, say now to her, look, you have been concerned with us with all this care. Okay, so she's taking care of him. She's providing for him. Every time he come by, he had a room where he'd go. She provided his food. He's got a place to sleep. He's got a place to study. 
That's what a desk is for, right? I'm in a chair. I've got a lamp for him to see. Everything he was taking care of, what is she doing? She's honoring him. Yeah. And see, by honoring him, she's honoring God. And so, so what can we do? He, he, he calls a servant. And what can we do for this woman? Because she has provided. She's caring for us. She's taking care of us every time we come. She has a concern for us. Now, notice he didn't ask for it. Notice that he, he didn't come by and say, you know what, you need to provide a room for me. You need to take care of me. You need to feed me you know, because I'm the prophet of God. And you need. No, he didn't do that. She reached out to him. Mm -hmm. right? And there was humility on his part, but there was honoring on her part. Yeah. Okay, so let's read the rest of the story. Let's go on here. And so it says, do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, what then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, actually, she has no son and her husband is old. So he said, call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway. Then he said, about this time next year, you shall embrace the son. And she said, no, my Lord, Man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived and bore a son when the appointed time had come, at which Elisha had told her. So evidently she wanted a child, and she wasn't able to have a child. And so Elisha, you know, in talking to her servant, his servant found out she didn't have a child. Her son, her husband is old, so, you know, maybe he's past time, you know, being able to produce children. We don't know. The Bible doesn't say that. But by her honoring the man of God, God blessed her with a son. Now, the, the Bible says, as time went by, the son went out into the field one day to help his dad. His dad was evidently a farmer, and his dad was out working in the field. And so he went out there, and it was really hot. And so he had a sunstroke. That's what happened, his head. You remember, he, he, if you read the rest of the story, he says, my head's hot, my head's hot. And he collapsed, and his father brought him back to his mom. And his mom took her, and it says about noon, the child died. Well, here's this son that the man of God, you know, a lot of people today say, well, I knew he really wasn't anointed. If he was really anointed, my son wouldn't have died. You know, he promised me, he said I was going to have a son. You know, just think about that. All these emotions, all these things that can be going through a person's mind and through their, you know, this is supposed to be a man of God, but she didn't do that. You know what she did? In, in verse 22, uh, verse 21, and she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, please send me one of the young men and one of the donkeys that I may run to the man of God and come back. So he said, why are you going to him today? It is neither the new moon nor the Sabbath. And she said, it is well. I find that very interesting. She didn't talk about the boy dying. She didn't talk about her problems. She, she says, I need to go to the man of God. And she said to her husband, it is well. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, drive and go forward. Do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. And so she departed and went to the man of God at Mount Carmel. So it was when the man of God saw her afar off, and he said to his servant Gehazi, Look, the Shunammite woman, please run now to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? That is what she answered. And she says, It is well. It is well. Well, was it well in the natural? No, it wasn't, was it? Her son had died. This promised son, this miracle son had died, and she left him in the room, the prophet's room upstairs, dead. And yet she, she would not speak the problem. She would not dare declare the problem. You know, I listen to a lot of people. I'll be real honest with you. And, and, and they say they're in faith, but they talk the problem. They don't talk in faith. They t you know, out of one side of their mouth, they're saying they're believing God, and out of the other side of their mouth, they're speaking doubt and unbelief. And it's so important. Watch what we say. Notice here, she said, it is well. Told her husband, it is well. She was not going to let anything negative. She was not going to let anything, but she's going to the prophet of God. It is well. That's a pretty tough woman. Your only son has just died. And, you know, they, they didn't have, I don't know how far Mark Carmel was from where she had to go. You know, I don't know if she had the Mercedes Benz of, of donkeys, but you understand what I'm saying. She had, she had to travel a little bit to get to where the prophet was. 
And the prophet, and it, it, here's another thing. The prophet, he, he says this, you know, sometimes people, people, you know, they'll come up to you as a minister and, you know, they'll say, well, you know, they won't tell you what's wrong with them. You know, you don't always know as a minister. A little side note here. The, the prophet says, he makes a statement, he says, the Lord has withheld, for some reason, I'm not sure, uh, the Lord has hidden it from me. And sometimes people come, they, they expect, they think a minister is a mind reader. You know, unless God reveals something specific, right? You know, people come, Pastor, will you agree with me in prayer? And I say, well, what is it? Well, it's a, it's, it, it's a hidden request, or it's, I don't know how they even say it. Well, how can I agree with you in prayer if I don't know what you're, I mean, you don't have to go into a 30-minute spiel of what you need. You know what I'm saying? How can a person agree with you in prayer? You know, unspoken request. God knows. God knows, but I'm not God. There's no, there's been no vacancy on the, uh, on the throne. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to be ugly or mean, but, but we have to understand this. God doesn't always reveal. There's certain reasons why. And one of the major reasons he does is because he expects us to walk by faith. And so she went to the man of God, and she, she knew that the man of God, nobody could help her but the man of God. And so she went to the man of God, and for whatever reason, God, even Elisha says, I don't know. And, and so she caught him by the feet, but Gehazi came near to push her away. But the man of God said, let her alone, for her soul is in deep distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me and, and has not told me. So she said, did I ask the son of my Lord? Did I say, do not deceive me? Well, Elisha figured it out. Evidently, her son sends Gehazi, okay, t- takes the prophet's staff, and then they follow, and they come along. And, 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 and Gehazi lays the staff on the boy, but he doesn't live, and then, then we see the miracle, and the man's raised up. But we go back to that very beginning. She honored the prophet. She took care of the prophet of God. Now, it's not a, you know, some people are like, you saying, Pastor, then, you know, it's kind of a pay for, you know, get things for God. No, there's an honoring. God said in 1 Samuel, those that honor me, I will honor them. And, and when we honor the things of God, when we honor the, the men and women of God, years ago I read a book by John Bevere, and he talked about this. And, and people, and he's been overseas, he's seen tremendous miracles, seen tremendous uh, outpourings of the Holy Spirit, and he comes back here and he says, he, I don't see it. And, and he asks God, why? Why don't we see the miracles in America? And why don't we see the things that happen? And you know what God spoke to him? Lack of honor. Lack of honor. We don't honor the gift. We don't honor what God has brought into our midst. And, and, and so I'm going to show you some. So here we see someone that honored God. And, and, and first of all, they got a son. And then they kept honoring God. And God gave their son back to him. Go over to Mark chapter 6. Because we're going to see where people didn't honor. Okay? And they didn't receive. I know this, this might sound like a, a tough message, but, but we have to understand these things, that, that God operates through certain avenues in certain ways. And, and when we're dishonoring, no matter what situation it may be, and I'm not talking about that, that we put the man of God or the person of God up on this pedestal and that they're just whatever, but there is an honoring, there is a respecting of, of the anointing and the gift that God brings into our midst. And in Mark chapter 6, and, and Jesus here, he, you know, he's already been ministering. And in chapter 1, it says, Then he went out from there and came to his own country, and his disciples followed him. And what it means when he came to his own country, he came back to where he lived or where he was raised up. And when the Sabbath had come, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many hearing him were astonished, saying, where did this man, notice what they call him, where did this man get these things? And what wisdom is this which is given to him? Now notice that such mighty works are performed by his hands. So evidently, they had heard about the mighty works that he was doing. You know, word, word travels fast when miracles start happening. Right? People getting healed, people getting set free, leprosy leaving people, people being raised from the dead. So they had heard about these things. They had heard about the mighty works. Notice verse 3. Is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary? See, they did not recognize who he was. And because they didn't honor who he was, they just saw him as the carpenter. 
They just saw him from a natural standpoint. Isn't he the carpenter? Isn't he the son of Mary? Aren't his brothers, you know, and they list the brothers there. And goes on there and says, uh, uh, is it in, in the brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? Notice the next phrase or the next sentence. And they were offended at him. They were offended at him. Hmm. Boy, offense will cause big problems. See, they looked at him after the natural. This is just the carpenter's son. He built a table for me. He, he, you know, he put that new window in my house. He, you know, he, he built my wife a, a, a bread table. You know, whatever. He built all, evidently, because they knew him as a carpenter, so he had built things, right? His dad, his natural or his earthly dad, which we realize is not his real dad, but his earthly dad was a carpenter. Is this not the carpenter? And they got offended at him. Got offended. Why did they get offended? Well, the word. Word brings offense. And he goes on. He says, but Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives. Maybe that's why God sent Elijah and Elisha. Uh, They didn't, you know, they didn't perform miracles. Jesus talked about this. They, you know, Jesus said there was many widows in the land of Israel, but God sent him to a widow woman of Zarephath, which wasn't part of Israel. Maybe it's because they weren't honoring of the prophet. Just food for thought there, I don't know. Even Elisha. I mean, it was the Shunammite woman, right? They got the miracle. She's, she's not part of the heritage of Israel. And he says, uh, man, a prophet is not without honor except in his own country, among his own relatives, and in his own house. Notice verse 5. Now he could do no mighty works. Notice it, said, notice it didn't say he would do no mighty works. How, how many believe that Jesus was the most anointed person yeah. that ever walked the face of the earth, right? Most anointed person, yeah. right? And, and then when he walks into a room, boy, you know the anointing is there, the presence is there. Yet here in this place, he could do no mighty works. Yeah. Why? One, because he was anointed. You know, I've heard people say, well, if we just get the anointing. Well, that's true. We need to have the anointing. And we trust God that when a minister comes in or the pastor, we trust that they are anointed of God. They have a word for us in season. And we pray for them and we believe that. But you know what? If we have no honor, if there's no honor in receiving that gift, we're not going to receive from that. I don't care how. Jesus, the most anointed, had the anointing, had the Spirit of God without measure, and yet the Bible says he could do no mighty works there. Let that sink in. Jesus himself could do, and he goes, except he, he healed a few sick people, and you study that out. Rick Renner's done a devotion on this, or I've, I've read some things, and he said, except a few sick people with minor ailments. Probably because they, they had some honor there. They had a little bit of honor there. I find this really interesting. You know, because he went about, he was healing people all over, but yet in his hometown because they, they got offended at him. You know, sometimes, you know, over the years, you know, I've had opportunity to see respected ministers. I've had opportunity to see their flesh. You all understand what I'm saying about yeah, that? Yeah. I've, had, I've had opportunities to see, you know what? They're just human beings, and sometimes they get in the flesh. <laughs> I get in the flesh when I go around the roundabouts, but anyway, I'm just kidding, okay. <laughs> Okay, See, and I've been around them, but you know what? I know they're anointed of God. I know they're just a human being. Yeah. And, and we have to recognize it's the, it's the anointing that's in that person. It's the, it's the, the gift that is in that person. And, and so we see, that's why I call tonight honor's reward. We see it back there, and you can look at, you can study different instances and such like that where, where people that honor God, they, they got the blessing of God, they got the, but when they didn't honor God. You know, we talk about in our nation. We recognize that in our nation. As a nation, when a nation doesn't honor God, what happens? I mean, we got that going on in our nation right now. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but what? Dishonor, whatever it's going to bring, not that God judges, but the sin causes judgment to come in people's lives. 
And so when we're not honoring, when we're not honoring the things of God, when we're not honoring, you know, you know people wonder why they, their kids are a mess. You know, you've seen the things on Facebook, you know. Uh, you know, if you don't tell your kids about Jesus, the world is going to sure tell them about, right? I'll get on my soapbox here a little bit. You know, sports has become so dominant in our society. You know? You know, if Christian parents would say, you know what? Our kids play on these teams, but we're not going to have them play if they play on Sunday. It would change. I've had people tell me, if, you know, it's the, Christian, it's the Christians. They, they got their kids out there just like everybody else. Say, wow, well, bless God, you know, they might get a scholarship. Yeah, they might, but the chance is really, really slim. <laughs> right? Not saying that they, they can't, okay? But, but you know, wh- wh- who are we honoring? Who are we honoring? Here's a guy. You know, this guy was on the, the board of the church I pastored back in Nebraska, and, and um, they were gone for about eight weeks this one fall, and I was, so I, you know, contacted him. I said, what's going on? I said, where you guys been? He was a highway patrolman, so I thought maybe he was working, but I didn't, couldn't understand why I wasn't there and stuff like that. Well, their son... Uh, played baseball, and so they had, you know, one of these select teams or whatever they call it, and and so he had to play up in Omaha. So they Sunday was when they played, so they missed church, and and so he, I said, well, what are you teaching your son? He goes, well, you don't understand. That's the only way, because we're small town. We didn't. Well, they had baseball in the in the in the summertime, Legion baseball. That was high school. That was the high school baseball. He just don't understand. It's the only way he can get a scholarship. I said, I don't understand, huh? I said, what are you teaching your son? Oh, he got mad at me. I mean, he, he got mad at me, and he, he just said, you just don't know what, you, you know, you know, you're just because you're a pastor, blah, 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 you know, people, all, all that stuff, you know. I've been on both sides of the, I've been a sheep, <laughs> okay? And, and you know, it was really interesting. He, he never did get a scholarship. He never even went out for baseball when he went to college. And here, you, they spent two months where they missed church because he might get a scholarship. Hmm. What are we teaching our kids? What are we, what are we, what are we not just what are we teaching our kids, what are we saying to God? Yeah. Right? You know, I'd be wrong, so this sends my heart. We've had people in this church, they think, I mean, they've told me, or Pastor Gill, others, you know, if they come one, if they come one Sunday a month, they think they're committed. I know I'm preaching to the choir tonight, but it's also on live stream, so, <laughs> right? Anyways, and then we wonder. We wonder why prayers don't get answered. We wonder why. I'm not talking about, I'm not saying, you know, people say, well, I can worship God in the mountains. Well, do you? You know, when my, my older brother, <laughs> you know, we were, I was raised, my mom, we were pretty, it was pretty straight. And um, my mom was a disciplinarian in the, in the household because my dad traveling salesman now my dad backed her up and there was times i can remember on monday i'd do something and my mom would say wait till your dad gets home sometimes he didn't get home till thursday night and that was more punishment than anything he could ever do to me you talk about being a perfect little whatever you know the rest of the week you know doing extra stuff and doing things you didn't even ask me to do (laughs) You know, because, you know, kind of, you know, hoping to soften the blow here a little bit, you know, just, you know, but maybe by the time dad gets here, mom will have, you know, and, and such. And I'm sure they had a good laugh and, you know, or whatever uh, concerning, concerning that. But I can remember, so we weren't allowed to go outside on Sunday. We weren't allowed to play. We were allowed to watch NFL football because my dad liked it. So, I mean, we couldn't, you know, how many remember Disney, you know? What's, what's the little fairy thing? Uh, Twinkerbell. Tinkerbell. Twinkerbell, yeah. Tinkerbell. <laughs> you know, and then after Dizzy, you know, what come on after Dizzy? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Not the Lone Ranger. Got the wrong song. I know that was the song. Bonanza, yeah. I remember one family in our church, they, you know, they'd go out and we, we had church and they'd get home and Bonanza was on at 8 o'clock. He'd come home, the dad would come home and, and, and put his hand on the TV to see if it was hot. 
You know, it was back during the day where you had tubes, ain't that hot? And then you be me, you know, date myself here, you know, some of you youngins, you have no idea. But anyways, going back, so my mom and dad, you know, you always took a nap. You rested, right? Sunday, it was a day of rest. You went to church in the morning. You, you rest in the afternoon, went to church at night. So my brother, say he's going over to his girlfriend's, and now whether he went to the girlfriend and then he went to the beach, or he met the girlfriend at the beach, or whatever it was, so he come home, my mom found sand in the vehicle, and so, you know, two and two together, you've been to the beach. And I can remember, they got into a huge old argument, my mom and dad and my older brother. And I'll never forget what he said, I can do more witnessing on the beach than you can, you know, you're taking a nap on Sunday afternoon. I mean, that ju- yes, he did. <laughs> Amy said, oh, no, he did. I mean, that just escalated, just, you know. But there's a truth there, right? There is a, there is a semblance of truth there. Now, he wasn't out witnessing at the beach, okay? <laughs> just just uh, clarify that, <laughs> all right? It, it, but there was a point there. But, but the, point, the point is this. Are we honoring God? Yeah. Are we honoring God? Are we honoring the gift that God brings into our midst? No matter what it is, the pastor, if it's a guest minister. And, and how do we honor? How do we say, well, pastor, how do I do this then? Well, one of the ways we honor is by praying. Yeah. Another way is by being in attendance. Yeah. Right? You know, I know some people say, well, pastor, I don't need healing, so I'm not going to come. Well, you don't know. A year from now, you know, you say, well, pastor, I'm believing I'm not going to get sick. Great. But guess what? Attacks come. That's right. Secondly, it's not just for you. That's right. Too. You know, people say, well, you know, I don't need healing, so I'm not going to come. Well, you maybe you could learn some things. Mm-hmm. Learn how to minister healing. Learn how to flow in the Holy Ghost so that you, when, when others need healing, see, it's not all about us. Mm-hmm. You know, people, you know, I don't know where we got this. And, you know, even out there in the Christian world, you know, go find a church and meet your needs. I don't find that in the Bible. I find go find a church or get in a church and serve. Mm-hmm. I don't find go find a church and meet your needs. And if they're not meeting your needs, then you need to go to a mm-hmm. wrong, that's the wrong motive. Yeah. Yet that's, that's the mantra that we have in a lot of, lot of people. You know what, bless God, I'm not getting fed. Well, feed yourself. You know, when Linda married me, she said, do you feed yourself? No, I'm just kidding. You know, <laughs> because I'm not feeding you. But, you know, in other words, she, she wasn't going to take the fork out to my mouth or the spoon. Yet, we got a lot of Christians, you know, pastor, you, and I'm not saying we're not, pastor should feed, I understand. But guess what? How many ate at least twice today? Okay. And some are going to eat if you haven't already, you're going to eat later or whatever, right? It's all about honor. So how do we honor? We pray, yeah. right? Yeah. We come, right? And we come with expectancy, yeah. right? Yes. Come with expectancy. I'm expecting something, yeah. right? You know, years ago, and I know a lot of religious people got upset at Oral Roberts for saying this. Something good is about to happen to you today. How dare him say that? How dare him say God is good? <laughs> well, the Bible says it. Yep. Right? How yep. dare I can remember I mean, my mom until my mom and dad tell they got filled with the Holy Ghost. They were they were some of those, and we were like that. Oh yeah, yeah. He's a heretic. <laughs> right? Yeah. Something, how dare him say that? Well, what do you want him to say? Something bad's going to happen to you today? That's what religious people are. You know, you know, something bad's going to happen. No, something's going to come with expectancy. Yeah. And, and praying and, 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 and even declaring, I'm expecting something to happen. I'm expecting miracles to happen. I'm expecting the Holy Spirit to move in a mighty way. Amen. Yeah. I declare that over these services. I declare that over the... Oh, over, I mean, we don't have to wait till the Durants come, but, you know, this is a special time because yeah. we know that they, or she flows, or they flow in the, yeah. in the working and the gifts of healing. So I'm expecting, Father, I thank you the gifts of healings are going to be in operation. I thank you working the miracles are going to operate. I thank you for the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge. Yeah. I thank you, Father God, you're going to move signs, wonders, and miracles in our midst. See, that's how you build up. 
That's how you get that expectancy. You, and you start declaring that every day. You start speaking out out every day. By the time Friday night hits, you're going to be just, you know, <clears throat> bouncing off the walls, so to speak. You're just going to be ready. Right? right? When I was praying about this, as we, uh, just before I came, I heard, I heard this. There's God's part, there's the minister's part, and there's our part. I'll say that again. There's God's part, there's the minister's part, and then there's our part. We all have a part to play. Hallelujah. Praise God. Did you get anything out of this tonight? I'll pray for your toes. Hallelujah. I'm, I'm sorry, just, it's not the coffee. Hallelujah. I'm expecting We've been praying that on Wednesday mornings we get together. Father, we thank you. Working in miracles, operating in this house. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the presence of God. Thank you, Father God, that you are the healer and the miracle worker, Father. And Father, we thank you for the gifts that you're sending our way, the Kevin and Ann Durant, Lord God. And Father, we, we pray for them right now. We lift them up. Why don't you stand to your feet if you would? Father, we just pray. And we lift them up to you, Father, and we thank you, Father God. They are expecting. And so, Lord, we pray that you would, first of all, protect them. Father God, that you would uh, give your angels charge over them, Father God. Surround them, Father, with your presence. Surround them with your glory, Father God. And we just thank you. Thank you, Father. They are anointed and they are appointed for such a time as this, Lord God. And so, Father, we declare. We declare miracles are going to happen. We declare healings are going to take place. And we declare lives are going to be changed, Lord God. We declare, Father God, that, that bodies that, 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 that have needed healing, Father, we thank you, Lord, that, that some, it'll be instantaneous, and others, Father God, as they go, Father God, they'll notice changes in their body. And so we thank you for it, Father. Oh, we thank you, Father. We just prepare the atmosphere. And Lord God, we just, whatever we can do, Father, that we honor you, Father God, above everything else. And by honoring uh, uh, the, the gift that you send, Father, we're honoring you. And so, Lord God, we just thank you right now. And Father, if there's anything in the way, Lord, we just ask that you would show it to us, Lord, and that we can just get ourselves lined up and ready to receive from you. And not only, Father God, for ourselves, but Father God, that, Lord, that we can learn Father, we can learn as we watch them minister by the Holy Spirit. Father, we can learn how to flow better, how we can minister in the same same way, Father, because you, Lord, you have you're not respecters of peoples or times or places. God, you, you want all of us, Lord. And so, Father God, that we may not need a physical healing, but Father God, we can learn how to minister to others healing. And we can learn how to be sensitive, more sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And so we thank you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That might sound really strange, and it might, I don't want to embarrass anybody, but who's been having problems with bunions? Some of you have been having issues. Maybe somebody watching by live stream, if we can. Have you been having a uh, problem? Anybody in here? Hallelujah. Just I don't know why that come to me, but it, somebody needs healing. And, you know, those can be pretty painful, can't they? Thank you, Lord. If we have somebody live stream, if you let them know, they'll, uh, they'll text uh, either my wife or Miss Becky up here to let them know. Hallelujah. God's the healer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we just praise you and we honor you and we magnify you. Thank you, Father, right now in Jesus' name for the healing flow. Father God, you're such a good God. You're such a wonderful God. And we just honor you. You know, the Holy Spirit just reminded me another way, another way that we get our expectancy is by praying in other tongues. The Bible says, stir yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Spirit. So we pray in the Holy Ghost, stirring ourselves up. You know, years ago, I can remember, I remember R.W. Scheinbach, anybody? And, and so we were in a conference in, in uh, uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and, and Brother Schambach was the, the minister at the end of the, end of the week. And, and the first thing he did, he would do on a Friday night, he would do what he called double portion night. Anybody ever been to a Brother Schambach meeting? And so he would do, he, he served with A.A. Allen. A.A. Allen was in the, the healing revivals. And, and so R.W. Schambach was his uh, uh, 
worship leader and, and did the announcements and all that. So he learned, you know. And, and so he would, Friday nights, he would have what he called double portion night. And he would talk about the anointing. He would talk about Elisha, the double portion that received. And so this particular night, he said, I want to pray for all, all the Norval staff. And so he prayed for all of us, and the power of God was there. I mean, it was something else. And, and, and so then he said, now I want to pray for, for healing. There was 1,500 people that were in that room that night. And it took him two hours to pray for everybody. He was just as strong. And, and so I wasn't one of the ushers, but they knew I'd, I'd, I'd been head usher at, at my local church. And they come over, David, we need help. And, and I prayed solid, Mark, for two hours in the Holy Ghost. Because when the power of God hit me, something happened on the inside. I mean, I, you know, you just get elevated up to a, another level. And I remember just praying, and, and I saw some... You know, we talk about signs, wonders, and miracles. I saw some things that I've never seen before. I saw people get hit by the power of God, and, and there'd be nobody catching them, and they'd just fly back. they just fly back. Not injured, but just fly back. I saw other times where the Holy Spirit, when he'd go to pray or lay hands on people, it was just like the power of God would just take them, and they would just float to the ground. I, I'm... I'm not lying. I, I'm serious. It was, it was some of the most amazing. It was like just like a feather. just like the Holy Spirit just gently lowered them to the ground. I saw the power of God hit people and shake them. And there was young people that were there. And there was young people that the power of God hit them that got called into the ministry. And he was praying for different things. I mean, that's what we're expecting. But you, you got to come, Right? Don't be an observer. Right? You understand what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Well, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So stir yourself up. Take time. Take time every day. Pray in, pray in your most holy faith. Pray in the, in the spirit for these meetings. And we're going to see great and mighty things. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you for these people here tonight. Thank you for those watching by live stream. Lord God, I thank you for your healing power. And Father, if there's someone here, someone watching by live stream, or if someone watches this, Father, later, Lord God, that they have bunions, we, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for the healing power of God going into their feet and those bunions going from their feet in the name of Jesus. And so we thank you. We give you glory and praise and honor. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Now, I did, some of you probably saw me using my phone tonight. <laughs> we got a call right before, about 10 minutes before service started. And my, my daughter's stranded down in Denver. And so uh, we're going to probably have to run down there real quick and help her out. Uh, her car just honked out. Uh, picked up a friend at the airport and, uh, and such. So, I, you know, if you saw me texting, that's why I was texting. Okay? I just want people to understand that I'm not, you know, I wasn't ordering Pizza Hut or something. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for next week, right? Praise God. Well, we love you guys. We appreciate you. We'll see you uh, Sunday. We're going to talk more about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Shake someone's hand as you go tonight, and, and we will see you on Sunday.